You're listening to the Access Success Podcast, produced by Access U, a division of Access Advertising and Public Relations. Hey, let's do something big. I'm your host, Rachel Schneider. Welcome back to the Access Success Podcast, where we highlight important topics focused on education in every form it takes. If you're listening today, thanks again. Welcome back. This show was on hiatus during the holidays, but we're kicking off season two of the podcast with Access Use Art Director, Olivia McKinney, making her podcast debut, talking about all things graphic design and some timely conversations going on in the art world right now, things that have changed, extra duties and skills that creatives have had to learn over the past few years to keep up with our digital age. So, Olivia, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. First things first, before we get into these topics, let's just back up and have you introduce yourself since it's your first time on the podcast. And can you tell us a little bit about how you got into graphic design? Absolutely. Um, Well, my name is Olivia McKinney, and I'm the art director here at Access U. Um, And my background in graphic design kind of started um, a few years ago, but um, ever since I can remember, I've been I've been drawing and I've always wanted to do something art related. Um, as a teenager, I was um, kind of convinced that I wanted to go to a four year college and pursue an art degree there, but unfortunately couldn't really make that work out financially. So I ended up um, enrolling in my local community college, which just happened to be one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, And kind of got into the fine arts program there. And after being there for a semester or two, um, realized it wasn't as arts focused as I was looking for. And then kind of discovered the visual design program, um, which had a heavy um, influence on graphic design. So After switching over there, I've been a graphic designer ever since. Well, and can you tell us what are some good skills and qualities to possess to be a successful graphic designer today? Because you guys take on a lot of different roles now. I think the big one is to be knowledgeable about the programs that are used in the industry, like Adobe, um, and just stay up to date with what's going on and tools that you can use to help with your creative process. Also, definitely um, critical and creative thinking um, and a plan for overcoming creative block because it will always strike (laughs) when um, you are up against a big deadline without fail almost every time. So, What would be one of your strategies for that when you get like a creative block? um, Definitely. So in college, I was always taught to start with sketches first and just sketch every single idea out first before you jump into the digital programs. And I think nine times out of 10, that always helps just to do some doodles and know that it doesn't have to be perfect and just get all the bad ideas out first Mm -hmm. or anything you think might not work um, and then eventually reach what you're looking for. Yeah. And so beyond that, what are some other things that you would recommend that people have? It seems like a lot of patience and flexibility is what we always discuss too with our clients because they may have an idea for how they want something to look, but that doesn't necessarily translate for their website design or something like that. You know, how how is that process? Right. So I think adaptability is a big one. Um, just being able to adapt with what the client is looking for. Um and just kind of find a way to meet in the middle to help them tell their story. So I think we do a lot of research. Um, We like to sometimes do mood boards, which can kind of help the client visualize colors, images, graphic elements, anything they might be looking for, and kind of help us narrow down what they want their voice to be visually. Um, So we can kind of collaborate and work together and come up with some headlines, taglines, things like that. So one of the things that I've learned is to always just show up with something. It doesn't have to be the best thing, but always have something to show. Um, And then you can um, expound upon it and just make it more detailed and just kind of work from there. Absolutely. And what are some of your favorite parts of the job then? Um, my fa- one of my favorite, absolute favorite things is to, is that every day is different 
and I get to do a little bit of everything. I never know what's coming down the pipeline next. I never know what the next week or next day is going to hold. One week I could be doing just website design and the next week I could be doing logos and billboards and social media. So it's always it's always an interesting experience, never a dull moment. And with social media and digital marketing, how is graphic design and website design different from how someone would approach hard copy like a flyer? What are some different tools and, and skills you guys have to possess? Yeah, I think my main my main job with things like social media and digital advertising is to take the hard copy and try to tell a visual story with it. Um, just take what the client has provided and expand upon it in a way that captures attention while staying true to the message they're trying to convey. Um, Each client has a different voice. So helping find a visual representation for each is always a journey, but it's always worth it in the end. Yeah. Well, and as social media algorithms like we've seen with Instagram and TikTok have called for more videos and animations because people have shorter attention spans nowadays, how does that, uh, how has that forced, you know, designers and artists to work and, and expand their skill set? Because it seems like that's becoming more and more of a demand for our clients is just anything like more visual and more video things that are going to capture that attention. Yeah, I think it's really important to be multifaceted, um, especially in such a fast-paced industry like ours. Um, The more skills you have, the more of an asset you are, um, and the more help you're able to offer clients um, and your coworkers as well. Um, So I think it's just really important to have a good toolbox, I guess you could say, of skills that you can pull from at any given time, especially Um, with all the different ways we're connecting with people in the media right now. So one of my favorite projects was for G3. We got to make like a 8-bit Super Mario kind of (laughs) animation with him running down and collecting degrees and things. And that was really fun. Um, So every once in a while, we'll get something like that. But I think for the most part, it's mainly still graphics still at this point. Yeah, I remember that. How long did that piece for G3 take you to put together? Oh my goodness. Um, it was it was a while. It was a good while. Um, because I had to learn how to animate 8-bit pixels. <laughs> so that was interesting. I had to learn how to do that in, in Photoshop. So there was definitely time spent for the learning curve of that, which was something that I'd never done before. Um, and then the time spent designing the backgrounds and the characters. So it was definitely a good chunk of time. But I think Um, We all enjoyed it. And I think it really paid off. What advice would you have for clients? I'm curious who, you know, are going into an introductory meeting with you and you're still trying to get a better idea of their tone and their voice. Are there any like frequently asked questions? I think audience is really important, knowing the audience, because I think that can change the way you design something visually a lot, um, depending on if you're aiming for a younger generation or an older generation. Um, Also, I think their brand voice has a lot to do with it. A lot of companies already have a put together brand voice. And I think following that is very important. So making sure that we are in line with the message that they are trying to convey. And um, they're even from design standpoint, their looks, their colors, how we can use their logo, things like that. Um, And then deciding on the kind of images they would like to use. And what has it been like to have a variety of clients and then see how your designs and stylistic changes can carry over? Like, has there ever been a project you've worked on for a client and you learn something new that you can take on to the next client, but maybe modify for their brand and their tone? I definitely think so. I think especially with the community colleges, um, we've started to refine kind of our approach to community college websites um, because navigation can be a little bit hard, especially Mm. on such large sites. So I think we've definitely, especially me, I've learned so much about how to organize these, these larger websites and just kind of picking up little pieces of Um, from where every single college website that I've done and just kind of adding it onto the next. Tell me more about that. How is navigation design so important? 
Yeah, navigation is so important because it leads your user through your site. And if it's not clear and functional, it's easy to get lost and for your user to end up somewhere where they weren't looking to end up. Um, So really just trying to streamline navigation so we can get our users from point A to point B with as much ease as possible and with as little frustration as possible, just especially on a college website where you're looking for a very specific thing most times. Um, Font sizes are very important because the larger the font, the more eye grabbing it's going to be. I would also say probably making more detailed buckets of information. So clear titles. Um, We kind of want to avoid anything that might be a little bit blurry so you don't quite know where you're going. Um, Also, drop-down navigations can a lot of times be helpful so you can just roll over and see a list of um, items underneath that page. When we see a giant block of text, (laughs) we think, no, I'm not going to read all of that. So how can we combine text and image to gain as much interest as possible and still get the information across that we need to get across while still making it attractive to look at and interesting for the user. Olivia, thanks so much for being with us today. Before we let you go and get back to your work, since this is the Access Success Podcast, could you share a recent success story from a client or a recent project? Yeah, I recently got to work with the web team um, on a new website um, for a client who specializes in pop culture and writing content and making videos. And that was really fun. That was the first I'd ever done anything like that um, because we kind of specialize in in community colleges and things like that. So um, I was really, really excited about this one. It was so great. Um, And to see how happy the client was with it just made it so fulfilling. And being able to work with the web team and the account managers who are all wonderful on this was just so fun. Olivia, thanks again so much for talking with us today. And for those listening, we'll have another conversation with Olivia coming up in the next few weeks talking about AI art and some of the controversy surrounding generated art. So stay tuned. Thanks for listening to the Access Success Podcast produced by Access U, a division of Access Advertising and Public Relations. Find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram to keep up with what the world of education needs to hear at Access U Agency and connect with us at accessu.com. Let's do something big.